which is Trunk Nation from 6 to 10 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 7 Pacific, our live get-together, talking music, playing music, taking your calls and requests as well. Uh, so we're here live for another 20, um, I'm sorry, 40 minutes before we wrap up this week's show. Again, next Monday is a holiday, being Labor Day, so I'm back live again two weeks from tonight. Recorded show for you next week. We've had a busy one with a lot of guests tonight, a lot of interviews, and last but certainly not least, we welcome in the Dead Daisies into the studio. Good to see you guys. And uh, let me go around the horn here, because three of you guys I know, and one I'm meeting for the first time. Dizzy Reed down on the end. Good to see you, Dizzy. Hola. Also another current member of Guns N' Roses, Mr. Richard Fortas. Good to see you, Richard. Good to see you. And uh, a current member of Black Star Riders and various other bands I know him from, yeah. Mr. Mendoza, Marco Mendoza. Ready? Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too, bro. And uh, a gentleman I'm just meeting tonight for the first time, John Stevens. How are you, John? Yeah, good. Thanks, Mike. You look uh, a little bit banged up. You doing okay? I'm doing good. You know, we, we started touring the States in the three weeks ago, and I've come good. All right, good. I came over from Australia with, you know broken leg and a broken thumb. Hi, do, do you care to mention how that <laughs> happened? or? Uh, I was mud crabbing at the time. Mud Happen, crabbing? Yeah, we're catching big, big, mud, cra big mud crabs. and. Uh, we don't do that in New York, so explain. No, I was up in far north Queensland. It was just a holiday. I like going fishing and, you know, catching things and eating them. So, uh, anyway, um, it was a pretty isolated area and a crocodile came up and I ran one way and my foot got stuck in a hole and I fell over. Sounds like, a, with sounds like one of those uh, nature shows or something, you That's know? That's exactly what it is. Haggerstone Island, H-A-G-G-E-R, Stone Island. Look it up. Yeah. My Dot goodness. Com. My goodness. Well, I'm glad you're, <laughs> I'm glad you're okay. And, uh, Thank you, mate. And, uh, I'm very glad to be here. Uh, well, I'm not going fishing before a tour again. <laughs> <laughs> Who would think fishing would be so treacherous, right. man? That's oh, crazy. You know, up that neck of the woods. Exactly. And... Uh, of course, um, I saw Dizzy and Richard not long ago, Guns N' Roses, at Rocklahoma this year. Yeah. And uh, I saw, we were all at the same hotel, uh, the Hard Rock in Tulsa, for a few days. You guys had something happen with your bus, if I'm not mistaken. Didn't you start to drive and it broke down and you came back? Uh, I started to sleep and then it broke down. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's usually what happens. As soon as Dizzy falls asleep, everything goes wrong. That's right, man. But I remember you had split, and I was there the next day, and the next day I turn around, and you guys are all still at the hotel. I was like, what happened? He was like, oh, the bus broke down. We all had to go. Uh, right, right. We, we couldn't get enough of it. That's why. And, and then Richard got in trouble for running on the golf course. Yeah, I was chased by the uh, Oklahoma police. For, for crocodiles. <laughs> now, now you would think, you know, a guy from Guns N' Roses being chased by the police, it would be some sort of serious offense, but all it was was you were running on a golf course. Yeah, and they had a problem with that, so they uh, chased me in their little carts. That was fun. Where to drive? Yeah. Property. Yeah. Well, you know, to a lot of golfers, that is a serious thing. You got to wear the right Turn attire off. to be on that course, probably, right? Yeah, yeah. I should have worn pants. <laughs> <laughs> and Marco Mendoza here from uh, most recently Thin Lizzy slash Black Star Riders, which of course you're still doing, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And I realize that you and Richard obviously have a little bit of history, I would imagine, because Richard, you were in a in one Thin of the, Lizzy, in Thin Lizzy yeah. for a bit with, with Mark. With Marco. Marco. How did that go for you? That must have been a big thrill, huh? It was wonderful. Uh -huh. uh, we uh, and then then Lizzie did a bunch of support shows for uh, GNR in for Europe. Europe. Yeah, so we we've been hanging. A Get lot. right up when you speak, Marco, because yeah. we can't hear you if you're off mic. Yeah, we've been hanging a lot actually. How it worked out? We uh, we were just talking about it before we went on air, but uh, uh, Vivian Campbell, who started the Thin Lizzie Run, the, who started the Thin Lizzie Run, um, all of a sudden got a call from Joe, and they had some work to do. So he was like, "I'm sorry, guys, we can't continue on this," you know. So we were all looking at each other, going, "What's going to happen?" And uh, Richard can fill you in on the story, but he came, he showed up in Chicago. The connection there, he's got all the details. Yes. Came in. Sound check killed it, and of course it was like great. We have our next cat, you know. So we continue. Go ahead. That was a dream gig for me. I mean, for a guitar player to step into Gary Moore's shoes, you know, it was uh, that was because I grew up on on that stuff. I mean, right. Live and Dangerous was sure. Well, Brian Robertson was the role you were more or less filming. Yeah, well, in, in that, yeah, from that, that record, stuff, yeah, for sure, yeah. But uh, I just said Gary because he just played Gary. Sure, yeah. But, I mean, I, I was telling you off the air, I unfortunately didn't get a chance to see Thin Lizzy when you were in it. I saw with, I saw Vivian 
and then I saw after you when, when of course, Damon, who is there yeah. now. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, everybody said the same thing, though. Vivian has said to me that that was the most fun playing guitar he's yeah. ever had. That was his dream as well. Uh, yeah, for, I mean, when you grow up listening to Thin Lizzy, to, to, <laughs> to stand next to Scott Gorman and play those harmonies right. is just... right. It well, doesn't get much better. <laughs> you all have individual stuff going on here, but um, I think the, the guy I don't know that I want to speak to, besides his fishing abilities, is, <laughs> is sitting right in Black front of me. abilities. <laughs> it's John Stevens, and I, I wasn't quite sure, and I'm being completely honest about this, but when the publicist came to me and said, do you want to have this band on, and I saw the bio, I said, of course, because I know Dizzy, I know Richard, I know Marco, and I said, well, you know, sure, have him come in. And then I got the record, and you have... Uh, with the incredible Guns N' Roses family tree, your single has a solo, and I think was co-written by a good friend of mine, Slash. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at all this, I'm like, well, there's got to be some, you know, common ground here. So, John, <laughs> tell everybody your story, because this is really your thing. Is that is that not correct? Yeah, The Dead Daisies is a project that was put together by myself and uh, uh, a rhythm guitarist, uh, David Lowy, um, down in Australia. Uh, David and I got together and wrote a bunch of songs, and um, we went, came, went to LA and recorded them with a guy called John Fields, and uh, you know, culminating in the, the Dead Daisies, we got uh, asked to um, do some shows with ZZ Top down in Australia, and also uh, we did New Zealand and Australia with um, the Aerosmith, and it was pretty much on the strength of just the songs that um, those people heard, and so we had to put a, put the band together and. Uh, the, the here they are. So you made, you, you made a record. You made a record first, and then you went about assembling a band. Which that's why when I looked at the record, mm. these guys are not on the record. Mm, no, but so, we're, we're actually in the studio now writing. We've been the last couple of days. We've been doing this. Been awesome. So okay. we just you know. Did the, so how long has this record that um, I'll play something from existed? How long has this? Uh, it came out on the ninth of this month. Oh, so it's brand new. Yeah, brand new. Is, yeah. yeah. Okay. And what is your history? Are you you were in an excess? I'm I'm, uh, I'm the youngest of eleven children, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> from New Zealand uh, via Australia, live in Australia, and yeah, I, I had a band called Noiseworks, which were very um, popular down in Australia back in the day, and I sort of been just writing songs and making music, and yes, I joined in excess in '99. Uh, uh, I was friends with them, friends with Michael Hutchins, um, and I yeah I I played with them for about three and a half years, and then they and then I left them, um, and they did the TV show to find a replacement for Michael, which was actually a replacement for me because I left them. <laughs> Michael was, but you know that's TV. Right. Uh, anyway, but uh, so yeah, that was good fun. They're a great band, and some great songs, and you know I just been doing my thing down in Australia. And how did you go about connecting with, with these guys, with Marco and with Richard and with Dizzy? How did this band, how did you decide now taking, well, putting a band together? Did you guys know each other? Or? Well, no, I actually came into it uh, through Charlie Drayton, who had called me. And, I've uh, known Charlie for, you know, over 20 years. His wife, because uh, yeah. he was in the, the vinyls, lead singer in the, the vinyls. So, you know, we've known each other for a long, long time. So. Yeah, Charlie's got strong, uh, strong roots in Australia because yeah. he was obviously married to Chrissy and uh, also plays with Gold Chisel, which is like a, the legend. Australian institution, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, yeah, so we spoke to Charlie, and you know, Charlie heard the music, and said, "I'm in, let's do it." And uh, he, Richard was in town, and he just he said he called Richard. So you met? You we didn't met. know Richard previously, as far as no, knowing. no. Okay. No. And then where Charlie is... brought me in, and uh, you know, and me. then I've known Dizzy for a little bit. Right. <laughs> I, I actually met Dizzy. Uh, what would it be? It would be a good twelve years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, when when you were actually when you were in it. In he came excess. to see us in the yeah. excess. Yeah. We met and. Uh, we kind of uh, spoke through a friend of ours about mm. maybe doing something at some point. So when I heard, you know, Richard was telling me about this and then John was singing, I was like, um, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. <clears throat> and where does Mr. Mendoza come into the equation? You just called him, Richard? Is two that places. They booked two ways. He was on tour with the Daisies were... Uh, no, it was not the Daisies. No. It was uh, Diva Demolition, which yeah. is uh, the other guitar player. David Lowy's other band. Other band. And they were opening for Thin Lizzy Motley, 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 Motley Crew. Crew. Kiss. Yeah. Great run in Australia. Okay. And then he asked me about Marco. I said, Marco's great. You know, and so 
So the connection yeah, was made right connection. there. And then I got the call saying, you know, we're thinking about doing this. And I said, great, sounds great. I got the time. And then the cl the clincher for me, man, is I, I got the music sent to me and I heard that voice and I heard the songs. I'm going, I'm in. Boom. So and yeah, there's, there's a reason we're here. Absolutely. Well, yeah, it would seem it's, that way. But the reason why I bring this up is because, from my vantage point, I'm sure for a lot of other fans, guys that are, you know, American rock fans, hard rock fans, they're gonna know, you know, they're gonna know Dizzy and Richard from from certainly from GNR now. They're gonna mm -hmm. know Marco from many things you've done, from yeah. White Snake to Thin Lizzy to Ten what Nugent. have you, to Nugent. Ten Nugent, yeah. tons of stuff. Yeah. Um, but but you, John, this is actually your thing, and and in in this <laughs> world, you're probably the, I mean, I think it's, you know, no disrespect, but I mean, people are going to have to learn about you probably through this project I in America. I like to be a man of mystery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm the singer, I just sing the songs, you know. That's oh, that's never the, the case. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, you're right. Okay. <laughs> I've been in this game too long to find that one, pal. Yeah, no. Um, no, look, I'm just, look, I'm stoked. It's, it's awesome to be playing with these guys. It's, you know, it's a treat. And uh, what can I say? It's you know we're we're, we're now riding together and we're just having fun. It's all having fun. And that's, that's pretty it. good. It's you know, a lot of fun. We've all played in uh, you know a lot of different things and we've all seen it all before. And you know so this is kind of like an open book. You know the dead, the dead daisies. It's an open book to have fun. So, uh, but it's original material. Right, yeah. right. So but you're already the stuff you're working on now. Is that going to be a brand new record? Or are you re-recording yeah. songs on here? No, we're, 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 we're just doing stuff, and it'll end up being another record. Yeah. So you've got a record that's just out, and you've already you're already working on the well, next. Always, 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 always writing, always kept, kept yeah. trying to do something. You know? And the new stuff is fantastic. It's really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you're out on tour now, right? Are uh -huh. you on? Is it uproar? Is that yeah, what you're we've doing? been doing uproar, and we just flew back to New York to record for a few days, and we haven't had a day off since we started rehearsals. I mean, we've been, seriously, it's been every day we've wow. been doing stuff. And Uproar is uh, Alice in Chains headlining that, right? Yeah, Alice in Chains, Chains Addiction, uh, Coheed and Cambria. And how has that tour gone? Because there's been a lot it's, of, honestly, a lot of festival tours that have been struggled a little yeah, bit this no, summer. How, no, how have you guys it done? It seems like it's done, been doing really well for the most part. Yeah, I've been talking to friends on other tours that said... Yeah. So it's things rough. There's so rough many out bands there. out there, and it's just so so many things people can come see. It seems like you know, bands are touring more than ever. Yeah. And it seems to be it's getting a little bit tough. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a great it's a great lineup. I mean, this this is a really good tour, and well, it's great for us because it's good friends on the, you know Danko's doing it, Danko Jones, sure. Walking Papers, so Duff's Duff, doing yeah. it. And, uh, yeah, it's great. It's well, and fun. I saw and I saw Alice in Chains when I they they played <laughs> two nights after I saw you guys at Rocklahoma. Uh, you guys opened on Friday this year, uh, Guns N' Roses did, and right. then Alice in Chains closed, I think, or maybe they played Saturday or Sunday, I don't remember, but they, right. they came in the next day. And that was the first time I saw them with Will in the band. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. and I was he's, blown away. He's yeah. awesome. He's I couldn't great. believe yeah, how great, great he, and I loved when he played guitar, and there were two guitars uh -huh. going on, too, because mm -hmm. it really made that sound even thicker. It was yeah. really, really cool. They so, sound great. They do sound really good. Well, let's play something from the Dead Daisy so people can hear what we're, we're talking about here. And um, the song I'm going to play is is Locked in Low, or Lock and Loaded, uh, Lock and load, which yeah. is, Lock and load. Uh, how did Slash come to be a part of this? Uh, I've actually known Slash for probably 15, 16 years, and, um, you know, we run into each other here and there, and uh, we wrote a bunch of songs together, uh, just hanging, hanging out, and uh, just mates, and Lock and Load was one of them, and when the, we did the Dead Daisies album, um, it became, it just a it dawned on me that oh that's right lock and load isn't it and I'm always songwriting always collecting things I'm a big collector of ideas and you know melodies and lyrics and stuff so the things sort of get born at the right time and lock and load to me was you know needed to be part of this project and um, fortunately um, you know Slash uh, uh, played his guitar on it and so he, he wrote it with you as well yeah. or just played on it? No, we wrote it together. So when did you first meet him? In, in Guns or, or yeah. on his no, own no, stuff? No, after Guns. After Guns. Did about he... 97, I met him? 90, yeah, about 97, 96. 
Okay. Yeah. You guys aren't going to get in like, trouble, Richard and Dizzy. Uh, yeah, this happened before. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because I don't know any of the politics. You know, yeah, you know, it happened before. Uh, <laughs> it's true to me. Slash's <laughs> involvement was uh, before we were involved. All right. So it's we just, didn't uh, play on the same. We weren't in the studio together. Or anything like that. It just dawned on me that uh, there could be a potential, uh, not from Slash's end, but there could be a potential issue with that. But um, this is this is before your time, so to speak. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. No, I've gotten a lot of emails from fans and stuff saying, "How could you?" That was, that was before. I didn't play on the set. <laughs> all right. It's all my fault, fans. See, you're not just the singer. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not. You're the instigator. Oh, yeah. well, definitely, yeah. Definitely yeah, the instigator. Good one. Good one, man. All right, Lock and Loaded is the name of the song. The band is called The Dead Daisies, and you can learn more about these guys. Uh, the website is thedeaddaisies.com, easy enough. And you can... Uh, Hit Facebook, slash The Dead Daisies, Twitter, at The Dead Daisies. So all the ways to connect. So this is John. John, you're singing on this. Yeah, I'm um, singing this, produced it, read it, and slash playing guitar as well. All right, so here it is, Lock and Loaded. We'll be back to talk some more about this new band. And uh, if you guys any have any uh, calls, if we have time, we'll try to get you on the air as well at 866-315-2663. It's Eddie Trunk Live. The band is The Dead Daisies. Check it out. That would be the Dead Daisies with Slash guesting on lead guitar and the song called Lock and Loaded and uh, John you got some pipes man I mean Thanks, it's sort of amazing as I was telling you I, I, I don't I don't like any band if I don't like the singer and uh, your Thank voice you. is killer. What was the band you said you were in before? Noiseworks? Uh, Noiseworks, yes. What was that band about? Did they ever make any inroads in America? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. We played. We played. We came over and played and did some touring back in the, in, in the, in the old days but uh, you know it's just do you have a crack? You keep having a crack, you know. What would direction-wise? What was that band like? Rock, it was straight yeah, up rock, yeah. sort yeah, of thing. Straight up rock. You know. What kind of stuff were you growing up with? In well, as, as you're from Australia, you said. Uh, New, Zealand. New Zealand. Born, yes, born and raised in New Zealand, but I've been in Australia since 1981, 81, yeah. Um, and you know, I just uh, I grew up the uh, youngest of eleven children, so I heard everything. Mm -hmm. I, you know, my I, my siblings were a musical family. Parents sang, played guitar. In New Zealand at the time, you know, uh, you know one TV channel. There's nothing much to do except play music. I'm half Maori, which is uh, Polynesian native New Zealand. So half Maori, half Scotch, Scots, Scotsman from Glasgow. My dad was. So you know, it's a sing, both singing cultures. You know, so I just grew up in a house where everyone was playing and singing. So you know. And where do you live now? I live in Sydney, Australia. You do. And what's the music scene like now? Is it strong there? Or? Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. There's, uh, you know, it's, uh, certainly a lot of the pub scenes closed down a bit, you know, but, um, you know, there's still a lot going on, obviously, with the, the Australian dollar being so strong a few months ago or in the last year. Every man and his dog was down there touring. Yeah. 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 It was nuts. We were down there because GNR was down there. Um, Boom, Kiss had just been. Yeah, you Kiss, know, Motley Crue. Kiss, Motley Crue. Kiss, Motley Crue. Aerosmith, um, Deep Purple, ZZ Top, like every band. Every, it was it's amazing as a local artist to see everyone coming out. It's like, hey, you were, you were coming there 20 years ago yeah. on the Dollar Shop. Sabbath, <laughs> uh, everybody, um, we saw yeah. Glenn Hughes, we saw, I mean, it was just yeah. Van Halen. Everybody was there. It yeah. was nuts. Yeah. So it's a good scene then. It sounds like it's uh, it's healthy yeah, for rock yeah, no, it is. It's very it's very healthy. That's good. Now let me ask you this: Where does this go going forward? Because as we mentioned, all of you guys and listen, this is something that every band I have on, we have this conversation. Every musician is multitasking these days. You hardly find any musician that's only in one band or one project. And obviously everybody here has fairly active schedules. I mean, you know, for Richard and Dizzy, when Axel calls, I'm sure you're going to have to go do your thing with guns. And and Marco, I know you've got Black Star Riders. The record just came Coming out. Up, I yeah. love it. And, and dates and, and what have you. So how does that fall in with the Dead Daisies? Where does, how are you going to make this all work? You've got guys that are not only... Is this, you know, in different bands, different times, and all that? I mean, we're all we're all adults. We've all been, you know, been there and done done it all before, and we're playing together because we actually want it. Yeah, and obviously exactly. everyone has their priorities, <laughs> and you know, they their priorities come first. I mean, uh, you know, and then we just work it out as. You know, uh, I don't do. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. Uh, you know, 
we're, we're not. Uh, but see, you, you, John, have to be cool with that in, in terms of knowing that, it, that... Yeah, but it's not like John's sitting around waiting for us. I mean, he's got a very successful thing going in Australia with just his solo stuff. So. Oh, you do? That's well. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not aware yeah, of that. So, yeah, you, so yeah, you're yeah, he's well-known. He's a well-known name. There, you're a big, so. uh, a big solo artist in Australia. Uh, I, I work a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I love to work, and I love to write, and I love to work with mus other musicians and collaborate. I love it. It's the whole thing, is keep keep moving, keep playing, you know, because that's how you, you get better, and that's how you just, you know, come up with stuff and have fun. So have you had, uh, as a solo artist, uh, hit singles in, mm -hmm. in Australia? Yes. So you've had chart success, and yeah. when you tour on your own, how, how, what's your... I, I can do it with, with my band, whether it, you know, I do acoustic, or I do, you know. It's ve it's such a varied thing. I just play and sing. <laughs> would you would you like to? Is a goal of yours to become successful in America and become better known here? Ah, uh, yeah, because uh, yeah, yeah, he's to be really successful opposed in, to it. To be <laughs> successful anywhere, I think to get to, you know I was you know get your music out to as many people as possible. You know it, that's what it's about really. If people like your stuff, it's kind of cool. It doesn't mean there's any ego attached to that because you know that's could have gone a long time ago. Right. You know, the reality is we're you know, working songwriter musician, and that's what I love to do and. That's what I hope to do when I'm 80, sitting on the stool. You know, I saw Muddy Waters play in 1981 at the Roxy. It was my first time in Los Angeles, and we Willie Dixon was supporting him, and he came out with his walking stick. And I saw Muddy Waters, and I said, I want to be that when I grow up. I want to be that guy sitting on the stool, still singing and playing, and and having that joy. Uh, with, with performing, I mean, B.B. King still does that, you know, I mean, I, Keith Richards still sells up, I suppose, but, Charlie you know, Winter. that is, <laughs> it's to me, Winter. that is, that is, that is what success is, but longevity. The key, but the key is, I agree with you 100%, but the key is still being that age, like the people you're talking about, and still being good, because there are people that I see that have, to use the term, stayed too long at the party, mm -hmm. and they get up on stage and they aren't good anymore, and they can't sing, and everything's so tuned down, and they can't come close to performing or singing like they used to, and those, at least as a fan, are the people I say, I wish they would have let it go respectfully and done something else. Mm -hmm. And there's other guys that, you know, like you mentioned Aerosmith before, who I think are insane because yeah. they're, they're in their mid-60s and maybe better than they've ever done. Yeah, amazing. amazing. Uh, yeah. Just you know, freaks, freaks. Yeah, Marco and I just, when we were in Sydney, we saw Glenn Hughes. Glenn's insane. That's so. I, I mean, that guy, wow. Yeah. So there are exceptions. He's unbelievable. There are exceptions. Yeah, there are exceptions. Ever. And John Stevens may be that exception in 30 or 40 years. We'll have to see hey, what happens. He's yeah. kicking ass. I'll have a tell. I'll have a crack. If he can keep away from the crocodiles. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Stay away yeah. from the mud fishing or yeah. whatever. He looks like it almost took your thumb there, man. That's. Ah, uh, yeah, but yes, yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I want it. Yeah. So, so how many records for people who are listening to the Dead Daisies and we're going to play another track and like me, first discovering what you're about and your voice and all that. How many records in your history would there be for them to go back into the archives and check out? I would you, just go online and find out. Is it is a tens, twenties, thirties? I don't know. I don't know. I've never counted, really. But there's a couple. <laughs> Why is Richard more laughing? Yeah, yeah. He's more than a couple. Yeah. Were you guys yeah. aware of his work before you started doing this this band with him? Yeah, I was. From how? How, Richard? From, oh, well, I heard noise works. Okay. And, uh, From going to Australia or here in America? I, you know, as musicians, you find, you search stuff out, you know. It's like, there's so many great Australian bands that most people in America don't know about bands like Buffalo or the Angels or uh, I mean you know this or Jimmy Barnes or you know, people don't Jimmy Barnes I heard of because I think Jimmy Barnes had a half a, had a hit here at one point and do you know what his band was in Australia I you stumped the truck you know whoa um, cold chisel that's the oh, band that Charlie. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not what I was thinking, but okay. yeah, and there was and a Jimmy Barnes British. that played quarterback for the Jets too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, is that who you're thinking of? I'm a Giants fan, so I don't oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? The way the Jets are right now, he could probably play quarterback for the Jets oh. because anybody could. Um, so, all right. So let's play another song from the record. Let people hear another taste of the Dead Daisies. What do you want people to hear, John? What do you think? Uh, I'll let the other guys decide that. <laughs> Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday's a good one. They're all great. 
the Dead Daisies. The song is called Yesterday, and this would be the debut album from this band, right? Correct. From the Dead Daisies. Yes, sir. Uh, check it out. We'll come back, and uh, we'll wrap up what's been a very busy show with a few more minutes with the guys before we have to uh, end it in about 10 minutes. It's Eddie Trunk live on Sirius XM, another one from the Dead Daisies debut album, and this track is called Yesterday. The Dead Daisies. And the track called Yesterday. Some serious vocals there from uh, Mr. Stevens. I'm going to seek out your... <laughs> and I, you know, I pride myself on trying to keep up with what's going on, but my tentacles don't reach into <laughs> Australia quite that well. But I'm going to definitely do a little re little homework, man, oh, because thanks. your voice is killer. Thank you. Now I know why these guys are sitting next to you right now, yeah, smiling absolutely. and nodding their heads. So, I'm uh, pretty stuck, too. Don't worry about that. Good stuff. So how far along are we with the new material that you're working on? Uh, well, it's... Um, we're, you know, we're in the studio and I'm on our days off. So there you go. I mean, it's really, you know, the more time we, we get, the more it's gonna happen, stuff's gonna happen because this group of people is, you know, just full of stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're very full of stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's really good. Uh, you know, we're just making music, man, and it's like we're it's bringing so out. easy. It's been so yeah. natural and so. Yeah. Uh, Something yeah. really cool about not having a time frame, just letting it happen. And it, since I've been in this camp, that's what it is, and it's it's really cool, man. It's just, it helps the creative vibe go forward. How will this know? differ from this record now, having these guys involved? Are you going to all collaborate on writing? Well, well yes. And yeah, we're that's what we're doing, yeah. And uh, obviously, because we've been doing some shows, it's like you know, it's exciting, because it's like, oh my God, the, you know, the the energy and the and the yeah. When you when you tour together, you always start to gel, sort of, yeah. as a band, you know. Yeah. Been doing it for a while, and then, um, just to try to capture that energy, which you know, that's you do that in the studio. So, so John, do you think that? Um, and I'm not saying this was some master plan of yours, but do you think that by surrounding yourself with guys that are obviously talented? in Richard and Marco and Dizzy and the rest of the guys in the band, but also known and rooted here in the U.S. that that will also help kind of transition the U.S. audience to the Dead Daisies a little bit? There's no guarantees in anything. You know, the only, the only thing is is that we're all in the same room enjoying ourselves playing, with the, playing together, mm -hmm. playing music together, and that's it. And fortunately, from this record, you know, we've been offered some gigs and tours, and obviously everyone has different connections, and you know, and goes, oh yeah, these guys are with that guy, and then us, oh, yeah, it's awesome. It's just really that simple and that natural. There's no yeah, it wasn't a master, master scheme. Plan. Yeah, no master plan. It's just <laughs> making music. Right, right. And you getting opportunities. So, are you going to? Um, you don't. You're not going to move here or anything. You're still going to stay in Australia. And no, we're all moving there. Are you not going to go there? <laughs> a beautiful place. I've never been. I, I would love to, to go it's, sometime. My wife. Yeah, my wife hears that she's going to get excited. Yeah. Right. Come on. So maybe that's the, the boys' master plan. Maybe that's why I'm the singer in the band. I really should really just want to be. Yeah. Australia. We'll get my hat. Yeah, really. <laughs> Crocky, put another shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> Good on you, Mike. Sounds like the Outback commercial right there, doesn't <laughs> Very it? Very cool. <laughs> just don't go mud fishing or whatever. That oh, Mud crabbing. Mud crabbing. Mud crabbing. Yeah, yeah, big old mud crabs with giant claws. You just pull them out of their holes, and they taste so good, man, when you boil them up. Yeah, awesome. baby. The thing is, you are dodging crocodiles up there because, you know, <sighs> so you do have to be careful, and unfortunately, I ran and fell in the hole. <laughs> and that's the trick of it. It's like, can I say, I fell over. So how are you performing on stage? Are you sitting down or? Yeah, yeah. I can only I can't put any pressure on my right leg because it's broken. But uh, he hops around a lot. I pretty <laughs> kind of hop around and you know, that's about it. But I, as I said, the guys, my you know, my voice works. So you know, there's no excuse for me not to be a, be playing. And I, I really want to play. Oh, I love playing. I, you know, it's singing. it's the stuff legends are made of. Seriously, man, he's, he's heroic. <laughs> yeah. Like all the guys in other bands are going, man, that's amazing. Wow. Because wow. you know it. He's nailing it. And, uh, it's you gotta come catch incredible. a show, bro. I'd yeah. love to see you it, man. I'm come. just listen. I mean, I, I'm I'm upfront and honest about everything, and I I you know just discovering you and what you're about. But that's one of the things. I mean, doing doing radio. This is my 30th year. I mean, I 95 percent of the people I'm gonna ever have in here are just by doing this so long. I have history with. I know we're mm -hmm. friends. We just we've done this countless times. I love when I get people in here that I, I love what they're about and and Thank get you. to meet them and now discover a catalog of music. So yeah. that's that's what I love about doing what I do so uh, congrats to you man and, and I hope that more people will discover you like I just did here in the US at least for sure um, I only have about a minute and a half left so I want to go around the horn real quick though because Dizzy you're outside of the Dead Daisies which we're all here to talk about and support um, 
you, in addition to guns, you're doing hookers and blow stuff, right? Hookers and blow are yeah. back, man. We're doing it again, and uh, the rock never stops. And we're going to be here in New York at Bowery Electric on October 2nd, not at Dingbats in Jersey on the 3rd. And L.A. stuff, too, right? And then right? Um, after that little run, we will be um, doing another residency at the Whiskey A Go-Go on Mondays. Um, it's going to be called F Mondays. All right. With hookers and blow, and uh, we'll have special guests, hopefully, Marco. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm down. Yeah. Man. I'm down. I'm down. Um, but you got to sing. I like the band, man. <laughs> well, you know what? We we need special guests, John. So, yeah, I'll come down. Um, it's it you know, that'll be every Monday, and uh, check out our our uh, our new merch line. And Richard, any is there any talk of any Guns N' Roses stuff as far as new music or anything? Has there any been any discussions? Yeah, Everybody's yeah, looking for that. We're, uh, no, we're working on it. Working on it. Yep. No timetable, no plan, just kind of working on it. Um, yeah, we're just working on new material and trying to get a record out. And hopefully we'll be back out, uh, I think, in March. And Marco, Black Star Riders, everything yes, going well? You got some dates coming? Yeah, and some U.S. shows, hopefully? Yeah, well, the U.S. has uh, been put on hold here for a minute. We're going to go out there in Europe, hit Europe October 10th, I'm told, and then hit the U.K. And funny enough, these guys are going to be out there with us, too. So These guys being dead, dead days? Okay. Yeah. Have you heard the Black Star Riders record? Oh, God, yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Oh, my right? God. I played it like crazy. It's and amazing. Seen it and I can't wait to see it live, but yeah, I, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Kingdom of the Lost is my six-year-old son's favorite song on the record. One of mine, too. It's the yeah, only yeah. way I can get him away from listening to the pop Disney stuff he listens to. He will request by a most proud father at the moment when he gets in the car and says, Daddy, put on Black Star Riders' Kingdom of the Lost. Like, That's my boy. So. <laughs> All right, guys, good luck with this, and uh, thanks for coming in. Thanks, uh, the Dead Daisies. Nice Keep an eye on these guys and uh, sounding great. I'll see you guys again two weeks from tonight for another live show starting at 6 o'clock Eastern. Next week is Labor Day holiday. Enjoy it. Thank you all for listening, and um, have a great couple of weeks. Enjoy the holiday as well.